welcome back to another video. You ready, boys? We're ready. You ready, Nick? It's time to put the 1JZ head on. Long time waiting. We were planning on doing this two weeks ago, but Junior had a brilliant idea to paint this engine bay, and it came out perfect. So, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? Dude. There's many different ways to sand a block. This is the way we're doing it. We use some sandpaper and a block that we use to do body work. We're gonna be blowing off all the dust and metal debris. This is definitely like a backyard way of doing it. You know it's backyard when Jeremiah told us to do it this way. We use the block to sand the block. We're gonna have to blow off all the air and we're gonna have to blow off the ports on the block for the ARP head studs. Hopefully the coolant doesn't. Oh, it's gonna shoot out. <laughs> 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 Whoa, sure? guys, stop. One more time for safety measures. We have to make sure we put the head on that. So when you're coming down the hill from Newberry, make sure your car doesn't overheat on you. Yeah, like Nick's car, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. that's right, huh? Isn't it 240 overheat? Yeah, bro, I don't know why, but once I'm down the hill, it just starts overheating. That's why he says you can never bring the 240. It doesn't. Oh shit. And the Jeep doesn't pass smog. <laughs> Just do this fucking illegal smog. Yeah, whatever that means. Definitely shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we have various pieces here. We have the head, turbo manifold, the turbo, and that's pretty much it. But we also got the cooling pipe that goes to the heater core, and that originally went to the oil cooler. We ended up cutting it off. Our good friend Jack ended up welding a bead around it so we can have a lip. So when we put a rubber plug on it, it's not going to blow off. Got a full 1JZ rebuild kit here. I'm not gonna be using probably like 50% of it, but it has all the gaskets that we need, including the water pump outlet. This is our first time installing head studs. Shouldn't be that difficult, right Nick? And for anybody wondering, 1JZ and 2JZs have the same head studs. A lot of the stuff is the same. This 1JZ is pretty much a better 2J. <laughs> no? That's, that's, me? that's what they wanted. Alright, Nick. Instructions here. We got the lube. Junior definitely needs that. And then we have the washers with the studs. You're definitely gonna wanna use a torque wrench. You're not gonna wanna just guess all this stuff. And that's why we have my beautiful snap-on torque wrench that I got from work. And I love this thing. This thing is about like $400 and it's worth every penny. Make sure it hasn't been cross threaded by some bozo before. Definitely, Junior. Especially the GE guys, like the ones who can't afford a GT. They're the smarter ones. <laughs> you definitely, I actually agree with you on that one. Clean up the threads. Then we're gonna be using the ARP lubricant. It's better than motor oil. Running them through, hand tight only. Definitely follow ARP's recommended torque. Do not go with the OEM spec, but you do wanna go with the OEM sequence when you're tightening the head. We have to put the turbo manifold onto the head because it's super tight. Once we do that, then we can place it down. Don't forget the dowel pins if you remove them to sand the block. You see that video you take them all apart and put one by one. Well, you can't even keep oh, a yeah. straight face when you're saying shit. <laughs> hey, put the hose down and blow them now. <laughs> nope. We're not gonna be using any fancy head gasket. We're using OEM, it's multi-layer, and honestly, we vouch for these because they're the best, right? Stock head gasket, 2JZs and 1JZs handle the most power. You can go with Cometic, Tomei. I've heard Cometic is ass. <laughs> is it really? Mm-hmm. I've never tried them, so. I tried And we're never going to. I'm scared, bro. Ready? What if it leaks? Then we redo it. You do it again. And then we paint the engine bay a different color. Dude, green. Green. No, some burst of water. <laughs> there you go. Now you're talking, bro. No. turbo mounted and when we removed it we had difficulty removing the bolts and even installing them so what we're doing now is we're running allens 
for three of them. So we can use an Allen key to tighten the one furthest to the turbo manifold. And then running a bolt that I can get with a wrench in the back. It sucks because I want to keep everything the same, but things get tight and you just have to work with what you got. That's it. Is it for them? I think it's right there. Yeah, it's done. What are you Black doing, bro? Black looks good, though. <laughs> yeah, it does. Don't pay attention to what I'm doing. Look at this. <laughs> Junior's holding it, and we're going to start putting the head studs in. Okay. What should we have done before this? <laughs> put the washers on first. Put the washers on first. Do your research. You cannot put the washers after the studs. We had to literally lift the head up again while I put the washers yeah, in. Three guys. One Took one. four guys. Wow. Four, four guys, four. one Jay-Z. Nick did most of the work. He did, look at him. Fucking unit, bro. Two minutes of holding and he's dead. Our first studded motor that we did ourselves. Awesome. All right. Perfect. Perfect. There's a common misconception when it comes to the size of the ARP fasteners. I believe all their stuff is in standard. The studs are, so obviously the nuts are going to be as well. And they're half inch, 12 point. A lot of people use 13, 14. They try to make something work, but pick yourselves up a half inch, 12 point. So you guys don't make the same mistake we did, where we don't have the size and we have to go to the store to get them. Now it's time to finally torque the head. Inside out, when you remove a head, it's outside in. We're gonna be following the recommended tiny sequence, but using ARP's recommended torque sequence. So. I believe the factory one is like 25 foot pounds and then you do some degrees twice, whatever that degrees is. When it comes to ARP, you're just gonna do 80 divided by three and then work your way up to 80. Ooh. That's it. It's torque, baby. Head is on. Dude, it looks so good in this engine bay, bro. I love how the black really complements the silver. Not bad, first time. Not bad. You're gonna be doing it to yours. Pretty easy. So we know to put in the washers before the studs. Yeah. And we have the right socket in here. So. <laughs> the next steps moving forward for the 1J is I have to send off parts to go get powder coated. When they come back, that, that's when I can start reassembling things like the intake. So it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be nice, and I'm gonna be able to slowly refresh everything to make it look just right. You want to tell them what we've been working on lately? Past week and a half? What have we been working on? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, what have you been working on online? Oh. We're learning a new trade. Big old turbos. Big old spoolie boy. Look at that billet compressor wheel. Shout out to Drift Motion. We started taking some tuning courses from HP Academy. A while back, I messaged Jimmy Oaks, told him that I feel like I have at least enough knowledge and understanding about cars to learn about tuning and start like diving my hands into it. And he told me to go to HP Academy and I've heard about them, but obviously I wanna get other people's opinions, especially tuners. I love understanding the way things work, especially when it comes to motors and I wanna be able to do things myself. So tuning has always been just a fascination to me and it's always felt like some sort of like black magic, right? We paid for a full course on EFI tuning and it's awesome, I'm about a third way done, and I've learned so much, even though I thought I knew a lot about the way sensors work, about engines in general, it's definitely gonna be helping us out, and I honestly really want to tune this car. It sounds crazy, especially because I am going to be switching things up, and I'm gonna be pushing more power, but there's no better way to learn than on your own car. Hopefully, I have the courage to do it. It's going to be a new chapter for us. We have a dyno super close by where we can do our own dyno tuning. That's what Jeremiah does to his Camaro. The hard body, we're definitely gonna have a tuner set it up, but I feel like I'm gonna have to be dialing in the base map, whether he wants to drive it or not, and setting up all the sensors, calibrating things. So understanding the way things work, so I know what to expect, that's gonna be fun. Hopefully one day being able to tune his car without any issues, being able to tune my buddy's cars and that's the main goal, guys. What do you guys think? Things are gonna be pretty exciting. We're learning a lot about Lambda, makes things so much easier. So stoichiometric is pretty much the perfect mixture for gasoline to burn the right amount of fuel and air together. So that's 14.7. E85 is lower, about 30% more fuel you're gonna have to dump into it. And obviously race gas is going to be different as well. But with Lambda, 1.0 is stoichiometric. So say your car's reading at 0.85, you're gonna be 15% richer than stoichiometric. Lambda just makes it easy all across the board. Aside from that, my biggest fear, I guess, is just ignition timing, because that's like the scariest part. You add too much ignition, you're gonna get some knock. If you run too lean, you're gonna get some knock, so. Even with these classes, 
we're still gonna have to have so much hands-on tuning, trial and error to make sure everything's perfect. I started cleaning the rest of the wiring up. I still have this side and the other side I ran through to tuck the harness underneath. I already deleted the ABS so you can see how much cleaner it looks down here and set up the boost controller. All the link goodies on my car. And we have the chase base stuff. This is where I wanted to mount the fuel pressure regulator. It's super tight on the intake side. So I didn't know where to place it and I still don't because I didn't realize how much the master cylinder sticks out and it sticks out right about here. So definitely not gonna work. I'm gonna have to figure out a new place to put it. And I feel like we just completely ignored Junior C10 in the background. I forgot to talk about it. <laughs> so Junior has a new C10, look at it. Has a brand new 383 stroker, built by Blueprint, expensive. New Edelbrock carburetor, tuned by Jeremiah himself. Has a lot of stuff and he was planning on keeping it, but we just swapped in a new TH400 transmission. It originally came with 350 and it was blown when he got it. So we swapped it in. We're getting the drive shaft shortened. It's going to be a lot of money to restore this thing and build the hard body. So we were planning on making it a little shop truck for us to make a build out of, but a time for us will come where we can build more stuff. We're broke. Yeah. <laughs> This is where I'm going to be leaving off for today's video. I appreciate everyone that's been helping out with this build. It's starting to finally come to light, especially in the past, what, one or two months that we've been working on it. Good things happen when you hustle. On that note, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you guys on the next one.